Hello guys and welcome back to week two of Big Brother US and in the wake of Matt leaving the Big Brother house last week, yes, that means this week is going to get even more exciting and interesting because there's a new HOH, a new veto up for play and don't you forget that Quinn and Mackenzie still have their superpowers. So, all that and more to come. But before we get into the episode, I just want to say thank you guys for the support on these videos. I hope you guys are enjoying them. I'm trying to make them as entertaining, as exciting as I possibly can. It is a good season so far. I have a hope. I have a lot of faith in the cast. They are making it very, very entertaining to watch. And I look forward to watching all of the episodes. But without much further ado, let's get into the episode. So, with Matt gone... His allies are scrambling. It is a little bit crazy how he only had, what, three allies in the house? Four, maybe? And i got to say, Matt, he just didn't play the game well enough. Everyone saw him as a threat and wanted him out the house first chance they got. And that's exactly what they did. Not even his silly little barbershop quartet. Well, it wasn't really much of a quartet. It was more of an octet. But anyway, my point still stands. So... Kenny and Mackenzie and Leah really are all kind of gunning for Angela to go this week. Um, yeah, that tracks. I wouldn't expect anything less from them considering she was the one that put Matt up in the first place and also the one that kind of had the go. But I don't know if that's smart for like a game point of view to get rid of Angela at this point in time. I'll talk more on why I think keeping Angela around is a very smart idea rather than getting rid of her at this stage. But anyway, it is what it is. Moving on, there is a lot of turmoil, discussion, questions around who is the third vote for Matt. We know Mackenzie and Le uh, Leah definitely did, but who was that third vote? Well, we know it was Lisa, but the rest of the house also think it's Lisa. <laughs> and Lisa thinks she's being so swift about it, which is really funny. Tucker called her out immediately. t thought that it might be Lisa, as did Chemo. And then Lisa decided to um lie to Chelsea about it not being her and was like, oh yeah, that's why I wanted to get rid of Matt. And Chelsea was like, ah, you were so far up Matt's butthole this week. So I think it was you that decided to save him. Honestly, Lisa, I don't know what she's doing currently. She's doing the most and it's just not working out for her currently. It's a shame. It really is. But you know what? She's highly entertaining and she is very, very funny. So I hope they don't just get rid of her because she's annoying them. I hope that it's, it's a tactical decision rather than a personal grievance against her. So it's time for the HOH competition. And I gotta say, there were three people going into this that I did not want to win. Kenny, Leah, Mackenzie. Because I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna put Angela up and it's just gonna be a little bit boring. Ideally, I wanted someone like Quinn to win, maybe t -Core, maybe even a cheeky little chemo win. But either way, this was a very, very funny HOH because it mixed two of my favorite things. Funny, animal, videos, I forgot what I was talking about there, and Big Brother HOH competitions. So I gotta say, it was funny, it was really good. The videos that they decided to choose were actually funny, which kind of surprised me, I didn't expect that. So I felt like they did a really, really good job there. And then also, I was really wondering how specific these questions are going to be because the first one was like oh was the cat orange no obviously it wasn't and the second one was like was the girl wearing gloves in the split second that you saw her hands in the very first video it was like huh huh so yeah they definitely did get harder the more questions they answered but i gotta say after the first question everyone was still in after the second question lisa brooklyn cam tucker quinn joseph mckenzie and rubina were all out which is crazy <laughs> i really didn't expect two questions in for eight people to be eliminated all at once so that left us with kenny cedric chemo chelsea t and leah obviously leah and kenny i was like i don't want them to win 
So fortunately, Kenny and Cedric were out in the next question, and then Kima was out in the question after that, and then they did another round of animal videos, which was also very, very funny, and then Chelsea became the new head of household. Chelsea as head of household was not something on my bingo card for this week, but I feel like it is a good, interesting plot twist, because Chelsea had zero power last week, and now she's got all the power this week. So it'll be interesting to see what she does with it and how she approaches this topic. Because I would be concerned that she's just going to play it safe. When really, playing it safe is boring. It's boring. Take out your competitors. Take them out. At least one of them's got to go home. Do you know what I mean? So maybe, I don't know. It's, it's so tough because there's now three people going up on the block instead of two. So you now piss off three people and that's a lot of people to piss off in a house. So I don't know. It is interesting. It's an interesting one. But either way, it is what it is. Not really much you can do about it. So I am going to finish up on the head of household by saying I really enjoyed that competition. And let's move into some more strategic thinking, shall we? So obviously people are coming to Chelsea being like, I think this person needs to go up, I think this person needs to go up, I think this person needs to go up. And really, the only person that seemed to be talking some sense to me was Cam. He said, I think you should put up MJ, Lisa, or Leah. I think you need to put up those three, because then you guarantee at least one of them is going home. There's no point putting up Angela, there's no point putting up Kenny, they're safe choices put up the people that are against us as a group because it doesn't matter whether they get off the block they're 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 going someone's going home out of that group someone is going home now there's strategic plays to be played here Mackenzie came to talk to Chelsea a little bit later and actually told her that she has America's veto and if I was Chelsea I would put her up and be like use it then take yourself off the block force her to use it so that she can't save somebody else i think that's the smart play here force her to use it on herself so that she can't blindside you and use it on somebody else so i feel like that would be the smart play here but i feel like chelsea is also not sure whether she wants to put mackenzie up or not she also spoke to tucker tucker told her you got to get rid of Lisa. Lisa is so annoying. And then this was followed by a montage of Lisa being annoying. But here's the thing. I really like Tucker. I think he's very, very funny. His facial expressions tell all. He is a hater, but in the nicest possible way. I'm a hater. Haters unite. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like he's just got this energy about him that's just like, I fucking hate you and I cannot stand you. And I love that about him. Lisa, bless her, is just a lot of energy. And she's trying to be all buddy pally with Tucker. And Tucker can't stand her at all. She's like, oh, I think we should have a cooking competition. And he's looking at her like, I could think of nothing I want less in life than to be a judge with you in a cooking contest. And then there was another, there was another part where she was doing exercise in the kitchen. And I thought, really, of all the things you could be doing in the kitchen, you're bouncing a ball, doing some exercise. Oh, Lisa, you don't help yourself. You're not fighting the allegations. You're not doing <laughs> anything to dissuade the house from putting you up and voting you out of here. There was a really, really lovely conversation between Chemo and Chelsea, and it was basically about faith and religion. And faith and religion is something that I don't comment on. I'm not religious personally. It's not my forte. It's not my idea of faith, of believing in a higher power. I just don't believe in that because personal reasons. But regardless, I appreciate other people's faiths and I let them get on with it because I think it's such a wonderful thing and it can bring people together as in this instance, because Kimo was telling his story about how he grew up in the church, and obviously we know that uh, Chelsea is, I want to say she's a preacher, or she's, she's something to do with religion, I can't remember exactly what she said she was, but anyway, 
they had a beautiful conversation about like chemo obviously is gay and he came out in the church not like quite literally in the church but you know what i mean and how his family accepted him and chelsea said that her brother had the same situation where he was scared to come out and when he did his dad was so so accepting and was I, I in fact i think chelsea said his dad just went yo anything you need to tell me just know i'll always love you and i was like that's the kind of stuff you want to hear from parents parents who don't accept their children for who they are is wild to me like it actually is crazy because you've brought this person into the world and you want them to be miserable just for the sake of them living in the ideals of what you wanted your child to be that's crazy to me but it is what it is yeah i just thought it was such a beautiful conversation between these two and between two people that like i actually didn't expect to have a lot in common but clearly they do so let's talk pentagon which is a brand new alliance i feel like we've got brand new alliances popping up all over the place we had so many in the first week that have now crumbled i think i don't think there's a single alliance from week one that is still functioning now other than like a couple of duos oh, god it is actually a nightmare i really didn't expect it to have deteriorated so quickly but we have got a potential final five in the form of cedric chelsea and cam and then also they brought in Quinn and Brooklyn. A very diverse mix of people there. You've got people who are very good at um, like physical competitions and people who are good at mental competitions. And you've got a group of people that I don't think you'd expect to be working together, which I actually do think works to their favour. So you may be thinking, okay, well, who are they going to be putting up on the block? Because obviously Chelsea's in that group. Chelsea's HOH. So who are they discussing? And Cam is basically like, I think we need to make people use their superpowers. And Quinn's sitting there like, fuck, I actually probably should have told them that I had the superpower. But it is a little bit late now. So I'm just going to kind of have to keep that secret and hope that no one says anything. Remember, the only person who does know is Angela. And who knows? But speaking of Angela... Angela is the kind of person you do not want to put up on the block week two because if Chelsea's right and the house dislikes her then it would be smart to keep her potentially as a backdoor not a backdoor as a replacement nominee or just as someone to keep around as a number on your side remember Angela did not put Chelsea up when Chelsea had no power in the house so I feel like the smart play here is to put Kenny up, Mackenzie up, and Lisa up. The reason I say put Mackenzie up is to force her to use that America's veto if she can't win the veto herself. It would just be the smartest play there, and it would get rid of her superpower. The annoying thing is then, if it's America's veto and America chooses who goes up, who would it be? I don't believe it would be Angela, but then again, I feel like a lot of casual fans who don't really watch the feeds and don't really understand how Big Brother works would probably vote for her. So she'd probably end up on the block regardless. But I just don't think she's the smart play here. She is a shield and she is someone else's target. She is Mackenzie's target, she's Leah's target, and she is Kenny's target. If any of those three become HOH the next week, she's there angela is there for them to put up so it might be a shield for you in a future week so i just think getting rid of angela at this point in the competition is pointless really really pointless and that's just me talking game the people i would want rid of are Mackenzie, leah and lisa because they're the people who are actively up in me kenny as well but kenny is so alone in the house that they're that he's not he's not even a threat he hasn't got any numbers, so he's not a threat in my eyes. He might be a competition threat, but even then, he hasn't been able to pull off a win yet. So, nominations time. Who went up on the block? Well, Chelsea decided to play it safe and put Kenny, Angela and Lisa up on the block, which i got to say, it just disappointed me. I was... I was sad to see Angela up on the block, obviously. I felt like there were better people to potentially put up there. 
But it is what it is. There's not much you can do in this situation. And I just hope that Angela works her way off. Because otherwise I do think she will be the next one to go. Unless the house decides that actually we want to save her and maybe get rid of Lisa or something like that. I don't know. But it is what it is. I think this is an interesting play from Chelsea. She's trying to keep this HOH a much calmer week than last week. But I don't know whether that's going to backfire on her face. Could it actually completely blow up and she could end up out of the door in the next week? Who knows? But either way, that is all for today. That is all for the Big Brother recap. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next episode whenever that may be. But until then, keep on ranting and I'll see you guys later. Bye.